Hello, I'm Carolyn Black Sotier, and welcome to Kaleidoscope, your guide to the cultural arts in Hartford County. The arts continue to thrive in our community, and here on Kaleidoscope, we keep you up to date on what's happening by highlighting local artists, featuring the latest arts events, and talking with event organizers. Let's get started. Renowned artist and community activist Joan Henderson Hodes has lovingly captured the county's rural heritage by painting 24 of Hartford County's barns over the course of 65 years. And now she is sharing all 24 of her original works during a special two-day art exhibition in March with all proceeds benefiting the Maryland Center for the Arts. With me to discuss this exciting special event is the artist herself, of course, Joan Henderson Hodes, and Amanda Pugh, who's Operations Manager at the Maryland Center for the Arts. Good to see you both. Thank you. Good to see you. How exciting is this for you to take work that spans 65 years of your life and have it all in one place. I, I, it's like, you know, my friends all coming back to me. I'm really excited to see them again. I haven't seen them in so I, long. I bet some, because some, these are, many of these owned by people who the, the purchased them. Or yeah, the farmers yeah, yeah. so, Yes, oh, mostly the farmer, the people yeah. who own the barns wanted to have them, like an heirloom, they call it, to oh, pass absolutely. on down the generation. Sure, yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you a, a quick, and this might be a silly question, because I think most people who live in Hartford County know you, but for the few viewers who may not, can you give me like a quick 15-second summary of, we know you're a fabulous artist, but you also were a leading feminist back yes. in, the, in the day, as they say. In the day. Yeah, teacher. Um, I, I was a, fundamentally an art, trained to be an art teacher. Uh, I was in the Baltimore City as, uh, as, as a prof uh, professional, but I always had a studio up in town uh, from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to work, I wanted to get out of the house, but, <laughs> and my work will show through the generation, or through the decades, how I changed. So, so there are certain periods then, sort of, like, periods. You know, sort of like the blue period, or there's, there's different periods for you? Yes, yeah. uh, by the, and that show we're doing is by decades. We will go through the decades together with the county, and I'm, I'm usually changing along with the yeah. growth of the county. Well, and speaking of the county changing, Mandy, you were saying before we came on air that these 24 ba barns also show sort of how the county has developed over the years, and sadly, some of the barns that you painted no longer are there as folks have moved in and some of these areas have been developed. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the retrospective. Um, it's going to be two days, um, and it's, and it's going to benefit the Maryland Center for the Arts. Yes. Yeah. We have, the way that it benefits the Maryland Center for the Arts, our opening reception on Friday, uh, March 15th, is a, a ticketed event. It's a 35 per person, and it's, a, it's the first opportunity to see all 24 works You'll get to uh, mingle uh, with Joan and other people and get to see all of the paintings. Um, and there will be you know, wine and cheese at the event. And, um, and then the following day, we have a special artist talk uh, for 15 per person, which helps, uh, which will allow the public to have a, get uh, Joan's uh, words and perspective. And personal stories behind and these paintings. So let's talk yeah. a little bit about that. So you, you brought some, some um, photographs of these beautiful paintings and I'm sure many of our viewers will recognize some of the barns that they're seeing. There's one that's, that's quite lovely. Um, so tell us, you, you connected these barns because aesthetically they're beautiful, but also there's a story behind each barn. You've connected with the people who live there and work there. Well, this particular one, uh, you know, that there, there was nothing there. It was a pile. The, art, uh, the uh, owner said, to me, I would like you to do see my barn. I said, what barn? You don't have any <laughs> barn. I said, the last time I saw it was a pile of slates there laying there. She said, well, no, uh, um, an article. Itinerant, I got. Yes, itinerant. I'm not you sure that it. he was that. Okay. But he was, um, <laughs> anyway, a stonemason. Yes. And he put it together. I said, you're really? kidding. Wow. So I went there, and there it was. There it was. Now here's that, another barn. That's another a beautiful two-story or three-story yeah. barn. Yeah. That is gorgeous. This and that one you never would ever see because it's overlooking the Susquehanna oh, so way not. back there. What so about this bar with the beautiful field? And this field? is uh, Broom's Bloom. Yeah, and, um, that's recognizable. Oh, with, yeah, everybody will recognize the um, sunflowers. Yes. 
And this That's is up in gorgeous, Darlington. In Darlington. This yeah. is the one I stalked for ages <laughs> before I finally got to it. And now the one in Churchville. Okay, so this is just a little bit of a tease for, for all of you who are watching. There's 24 of these beautiful paintings. And I have to tell you, we had a chance to, to talk a little bit more before coming on air. Joan, you have marvelous stories about the people who work there and about oh, yeah. your experiences. So they really should go to this reception and to the artist talk because there's not only they beautiful to look at, but you know, very uh, a big part of Harford County's um, heritage. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, thank you both, and I look forward to uh, to this wonderful event. Thank you thank for you having us. Bet. Yes, please come. Well, the Maryland State Arts Council encourages and invests in the advancement of all the arts for all Marylanders. We'll learn all about this dynamic organization later in the show, so don't go away because we will be right back. The arts mean business, $166 billion in national economic activity, to be exact. Learn more and find out how the nonprofit arts industry helps our community thrive in Americans for the Arts New Arts and Economic Prosperity 5 study, the most comprehensive arts and culture economic impact study ever conducted. We all know that talking to teens about the dangers of drug and alcohol abuse isn't easy. In an effort to reach our youth, North Hartford High School psychologist Crystal Hensel wrote the play Addicted, which is an honest look at the impact drug and alcohol abuse has on individuals, their relationships, and their family members. Here to tell us about this powerful theater piece are Crystal Hensel, writer and director of Addicted, and Julio Fernandez, who's an actor in the, in the piece as well. Welcome to you both. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having us. Well, uh, bravo to you. This is, uh, this is something that you decided to, to uh, put together, what, six years ago? Right, I wrote it six years ago. Um, the topic of addiction has always been close to my heart. Um, my brother actually struggled with addiction throughout most of his life and ended up taking his own at the age of 19. Oh my. So it was really from that experience that I wanted to make something good in the midst of tragedy. I also knew there was transformative power in storytelling, so I drew upon my own family experience and that of others and created the play Addicted in honor of my brother. Okay, well that's very touching, my heavens. Well, so tell me a little bit, I, I mean Addicted kind of gives me a sense of what the <laughs> play's about, but can you give me a few more details? Sure. So Addicted tells the story of three young adults who are struggling with a variety of addictions. So we highlight heroin, prescription pills, and alcohol use. Mm -hmm. And the play not only reveals the devastating impact to the addict, but to one's family members. Okay. And why do you think this is so important to get? I mean, obviously, you've had a very personal story, mm -hmm. but you think that it goes beyond just your personal experience. Why do you think it's important for folks to hear about this? I think it's important because there's a lot of stigma associated with addiction. Um, I know parents sometimes are embarrassed to talk about their children who are struggling. Mm -hmm. Addicts themselves talk about feelings of shame, lack of self-worth, feelings judged. I mean, I even remember my own experience with my brother who was struggling and how hard it was to ask for support. So I wanted to change that. And yeah. I really wanted parents to walk away and any audience members to have a better understanding of addiction, to walk away and have empathy and compassion for individuals yeah. Yeah. who are struggling. Um, and I think it's important to show those that are struggling that they're not alone. Yeah. So okay. I wanted really to highlight those topics. Right. So Julio, you play a character named Alex. Can you tell us a little bit about that character? Yes, so I play Alex in Addicted. He is a 22-year-old addicted to heroin. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Alex, the reason he's unique in the show is because he does want help, but he's the only one that doesn't seek it through professional means. He mm -hmm. tries to conquer addiction on his own, which... Yeah. So there's a message there, is that right? It's something yes. you can't do by yourself. Right. Yeah. We all need help. 
Okay, so you, know, you talk about, we're talking about reaching out to youth, but when I ask you who should see this play, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it doesn't, it's not age specific, right. is it? Um, anyone who really wants to learn about addiction, this tool really can serve um, to fuel conversation. Mm -hmm. um, it is recommended for ages 13 and older okay. um, because of the mature content. Yeah. But we've had recovery centers come, we've had parents, we have students, administrators, counselors, teachers, really yeah. anyone in the community. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so Julia, what, what, what impact has this play had on your own life as an actor, but also just as a, you know, a young person, a 20-something male? How yeah. have you been affected? So um, it's given me a much deeper understanding of what addiction looks like you always think you know about broad topics like this, but until yeah. you really see it either firsthand or through an unfortunate traumatic experience, you really don't know, you know, like the depths of the darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's. We've been talking a lot about the play. Let's put up the calendar so people know. Sure. Um, this is free and open to the public, mm -hmm. um, and it's a great piece. You know, a, a, apart from it being having an important message and learning a lot, it's a great piece of theater. Um, there, the there are the three days: March 21st and 22nd at 7 p.m. at North Hartford High School, and then April 6th, 7 p.m. at Mount Zion Church. And I got to ask you: You've been doing this now for a number of years. What kind of feedback are you getting from audiences? Mm -hmm. What kind of impact do you think you're having? here well I collect feedback every year from all the audiences and the one word that always comes up is powerful I think addicted highlights what addiction looks like in a real raw and honest way mm -hmm. so I think that those of us who have gone through it um, can really relate to the experience and I think it really gives voice to um, the painful experience but mm -hmm. I also think that it conveys the message of hope and recovery and that sobriety is attainable. That sounds good. So there is the um, website to go to to find out more information about it, addictedtheplay.org. And quickly, um, in the 10 seconds we have left, what would you like audiences to come away with after seeing your performance? Better understanding of addiction, more empathy for addicts and their families, and most importantly, for the youth to understand what a path of drugs and alcohol can look like and how it can lead to addiction. Okay. Well, thank you to you both. Thank, thank, you. thank you for all the work that you're doing to help fight drug and alcohol addiction here in Harford County. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Well, when you think of art mediums, perhaps painting, drawing, or photography most likely come to mind. Well, what about hard-shelled gourd? One local artist designs intricately carved, burned, and colored gourd art that is simply stunning. Join us as we shine a light on gourd artist Susan Zanella. I am a hard-shelled gourd artist. Gourds, when you say gourds, a lot of people think of pumpkins or squash. Uh, the hard-shell gourd is a totally different category. Um, it dries on the vine and becomes like a soft wood on the outside. We can cut, carve, wood burn, anything that you can do with wood, you can now do with a gourd. So this is my workshop. I've got my drills, my mini jigsaws, uh, my cleaning equipment, a little bit of everything out here, plus all the gourds that are either in stages being worked on, my extra supplies of different size gourds, I usually have an idea and then go find the gourd that I want to take its shape. So I have different sizes, different shapes, and this is all the uh, gourds that are going to be something when I figure out what they want to be. <laughs> Anyone who does any kind of visual arts will tell you that it is our therapy. Um, that is what we all use. Most of us don't see shrinks. We play with different forms of art. <laughs> um, it just works very well. Okay, this is where I uh, store a lot of my gourds that I'm either in the process of working on or thinking about working on. Um, I have different ink dyes that I use. I do not normally use paint when I'm doing my gourds, when I'm coloring them. I use ink dyes, um, alcohol ink and then water-based ink. As a medium, you can do anything you want to gourds. So you can embellish them, you can weave on them, you can paint on them, you can draw on them, you can add rhinestones, you can <laughs> just do about anything you can think of. So my studio has a lot of boxes and shelves and nooks and crannies where I store all kinds of different things because I never know what's going to move me. I have different kinds of paints that um, react differently to different surfaces and different things I do with them. So I have 
six or seven different kinds of paints I work with. Um, I have feathers, I have uh, weaving supplies, I have leather, I have a little bit of everything down there. This is where I do some of the indoor work that I can do, such as wood burning. Um, I've drawn the leaves on the gourd and I've started wood burning it. I do a lot of carving, uh, three-dimensional carving, so that it looks like it's sitting on the surface of the gourd, but it's not, it's actually carved into it. Uh, and I do a lot of pyrography, which is wood burning. I have a sketchbook with me at all times, so I'll just sketch out an idea and then I will go find the gourd that I think will work best with the idea that I have. Then I will either sketch it out and trace it onto the gourd or sketch directly onto the gourd, depending on you know what the idea and how precise it is. The Cultural Arts Board is a wonderful organization that is so supportive of the arts in general and the visual arts in particular. They are they're behind the artists 100 percent, uh, both monetarily and with encouragement and getting the word out to the community and community involvement with all of the visual artists that um, I've seen around my area, which is obviously Harford County. Cultural Arts Board uh, encourages artists with money as well as verbal commitment. Uh, that allows someone like me to go out into the community to teach gourd art. I've been able to do a lot of education and obviously it's not just me, there's a lot of gourd artists out there and we have all been able to encourage the community to understand more about gourd artwork. Oh, I get so much enjoyment from teaching. Um, the enthusiasm of the students, uh, what they get out of creating something is just unbelievable. People who think that they have no talent and to show them that, sure, everybody has talent. You just have, to, it's in different ways. Uh, someone may not be a person who can draw representational. They can't draw a portrait, but they can carve a gourd or they can, you know, create lines that form these beautiful pieces of art. And I love being able to bring that out in so many different people. All age groups, I've taught um, kids as young as eight. I've taught people in their 80s, um, just the whole spectrum. And it's just so neat to watch someone realize, oh my God, I made that and it's beautiful. Look for a special Shine a Light On feature during every Kaleidoscope program. When we return, Stephen Skerritt Davis will be here to talk about the Maryland State Arts Council. But first, here's a glance at the county's arts events calendar. The Maryland State Arts Council is committed to building a strong, creative community across our state. And how do they do it? Well, joining me to tell us how is Stephen Skerritt Davis, Program Director for Community Arts Development, Arts and Entertainment Districts, and Individual Artist Awards for the Maryland State Arts Council. One very busy person, I must say. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank good. you for having me today. Oh, good, good to see you. I've heard your name so many times. It's great to meet you in person. Great to meet you, too. Um, so you're a guy who has his finger in a lot of different pies and pots or whatever. Um, <laughs> but let's talk a little bit for our viewers just about the Maryland State Arts Council. So, you know, we talk about it a lot, but 
What exactly is its mission and what kind of work do you do within sure. the state? Sure, yeah, so we are an agency of the government. We're in the Department of Commerce under the Division of Tourism, Film, and the Arts. Okay. Uh, we're an agency charged with the encouragement um, and investment in the art sector in the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. So we do that with a generous appropriation um, from the state legislature. We're third in the country for Yay. public support our of, our, of the art sector. So yeah. we're very happy about that. Um, a lot of grant making activity, a lot of professional development and technical assistance with arts organizations and with um, art, with independent and individual artists across okay. the state. Yeah. So the, yeah. the arts can, you can support the arts in many different ways. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to talk about some of those ways. But let's first talk about then how you connect, the Maryland State Arts Council connects with the Hartford County Cultural Arts Board. Yeah, so um, there are county arts councils mm -hmm. in all 24 jurisdictions across the state. Okay. So whether it's a, a, a independent organization, a 501c3, or a a section of the county, county government, a yeah. county mm -hmm. agency, uh, we support them to support local arts organizations. Okay. So our funding sort of filtered through the through somebody on the local level who has the expertise and knows the local players and can get our funding out oh, to I reach see. more communities throughout okay, the state. Okay, terrific. And how yeah. do you like Harford County? Harford County is wonderful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So there's a lot going on, a lot of new things too, um, yeah. and we're going to talk about some of those new programs. They're called creativity grants. Can you tell me a little bit about that because I'm sure there are a number of Harford County artists who might be interested yes. in applying. Yes, and we, we want to hear from all of them. So the Creativity Grant Program was just developed. Um, we're piloting, piloting it um, starting on February 1st. We'll be okay. accepting applications. Okay. And it's really meant to support small organizations um, or organizations who don't currently receive funding from the Maryland State Arts Council as well as independent artists. And these okay. are project grants. So if an organization has a project that they're working on or wants to test out a new idea, um, they can come to us for funding of up to $3,500. Okay. Um, it's a very simple application. It's, ah. it's three or four questions, really? um, a budget, and that's all that we ask of you. And um, we'll take that, we'll look at it, we'll get the money out to you within a month. So A month? Yeah. And it's a kind of a rolling application that you do? Wow. It's a rolling application. So we'll start accepting applications on February 1st. Right. And then um, until we run out of money, <laughs> we are going to give out grants um, awesome. to support small, small community-based projects. That is terrific. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's also talk a bit ab about what's something that I think you're partnering with the Maryland Citizens for the Arts, which is a different organization, because um, you're going to be doing something that's called the Art Summit which yes. is a new program as well, or it's event, I guess. It's brand new. It's the first time it's happened in Maryland. We're convening basically the entire art sector um, in one place this summer, June 7th and 8th at UMBC. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be a great event um, full of celebration. We're yeah. going to have the Individual Artist Awards 2019 celebration there. And we'll also have the Maryland Heritage Awards there as part of a bigger symposium um, with lots of professional development, um, a lot of talks and things like that. Um, we're hoping that lots of arts organizations, boards, um, individual artists um, and arts lovers come out to help support the, the arts in, in Maryland. Wow, that is terrific. Okay, so people should mark the calendars. So we're going to put up different kinds of websites. I think probably they, that's what we've been doing during this interview. But So if you want to find out more about the Art Summit, you can do that. If you want to find out more about Maryland State Arts Council. There's and the Creativity Grants. Yes, yes, and the Creativity Grants. on our grants. website. Yeah. So you think uh, 2019, as we're right now in the session, you think we're going to have a good year for funding again? I hope so. All, all signs point to you. Yes, okay, so. so we I guess we encourage everyone to come to Maryland Arts Day, Maryland Arts Day. February 14th and, and make our artistic voices heard. Yes, yes yeah. right. Well, it was wonderful meeting you, it's and thank you for you. all the good work that you do here in Harford County and across the entire state. Thank you. All right, thanks. Well, there's more to come on Kaleidoscope, so don't go away. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Kaleidoscope. As the government-appointed local arts agency, the Harford County Cultural Arts Board is the premier local resource for arts, for cultural and historical organizations, for individual artists, and for you, our county residents. The board's mission is to preserve, enhance, and promote the culture of Harford County, Maryland. Well, this year's Maryland General Assembly session is underway, and more than 30% of its members are brand new. So please join the Maryland arts community on Thursday, February 14th, as we travel to Annapolis to communicate to our legislative newbies that Maryland loves the arts. Join us for Maryland Arts Day. Maryland Traditions, the folk life program sponsored by the Maryland State Arts Council, is currently accepting applications for apprenticeship awards and nominations for heritage awards. Now, the apprenticeship award supports up to one year of study in folk life or living cultural traditions. The heritage awards recognize outstanding stewardship of Maryland folk life. The deadline for applications and nominations is February 15th. And finally, save the dates, June 7th and 8th, for the first annual Maryland Arts Summit, presented by Maryland Citizens for the Arts. It will be the first of its kind for the arts sector in Maryland, highlighting the work that is being done through our communities. Dialogue, learning, and networking opportunities will focus on the growth of Maryland arts, and the Harford County Cultural Arts Board will have grants available to cover the registration fee. So look for more information coming later this spring, but mark your calendars now. And that wraps up today's program. Thank you for watching Kaleidoscope, produced in partnership with the Cultural Arts Board of Harford County and aired exclusively on Harford Cable Network. We hope you'll continue to tune in to Harford County's Arts Connection. For Kaleidoscope, I'm Carolyn Black-Sotier.